because when there is no vision, the people perish. And let me show you something. We're looking at Second Kings chapter eleven. Second Kings chapter eleven. I'm reading from verse one. And remember, this is planning. This is planning. Plan your time. Plan your future. Plan the weeks ahead. Plan the years ahead. Now you are 27. What are you going to be by the time you are 40? 13 years. And it's not 13 years, it's not too far. You'll be surprised. Before you think about, you know, whatever it is, already you'll be 40. And then you'll, if you're not planning, you'll still be at the same level you are now, 27, even at the age of 40. It takes planning. Now you're 40. What are you going to do for the next 10 years? Where do you want to find yourself in your place of work? Who do you want to be? If you are just like, you know, a laborer now, are you going to remain a laborer for the rest of your life? Evening classes are there. Personal self-development is there. And there are a lot of things you can do. To just keep on improving yourself. And then you are moving up and moving up and moving up. Because of planning. I, 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 I learned of a particular person that, you know, came into a particular company. And it was just like a recruit. Just like an ordinary person. And then the moment he got in there, he said, Before I leave this place, I'm going to be... The direct, one of the directors, one of the presidents before I leave. And then he kept on working at it. He kept on developing it. It's a plan. It's a plan. It's because you have the goal, the destination, the vision that this is what you are going to be. And then he was climbing up and climbing up before 10 years. He became one of the directors in that company. You know, it can happen to you too. It will happen to you too. You're free. Your mind is free now. And your spiritual soul is free. But you know, you carry your load at the back. And then you're standing at the gate over there. And you see some of these are people younger than you are driving away their vehicle. And then they look at you. Oh, sister, how are you? God bless you. And then they drive. They will say, what? Me of all people standing over here. Plan. Your plan, you say, okay. In five years time, I too will be waving to people. Your plan, you are going to get it. You see that kind of fear, amen? Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Young people, God will bless you. Yeah. You, know, you know, this applies to young people. In fact, you have great opportunity because you can plan. Because now you are free. You don't have to worry about breakfast. Daddy and mommy will worry about that. You don't have to worry about school fees. Daddy and mommy will worry about that. And then you don't have to worry about accommodation, paying house rent. Daddy and mommy will take care of that. You don't have to worry about, you know, how you are going to get books. Daddy and mommy will, you know, think about. You are free. And because you are free, you say, now I am 16. By the time I'm 25, nine years time, where would I be? What would I do? Plan your future. And then you say, if I am going to be there, if that's what I'm going to be, what will I do? If I'm going to become an engineer, what are the subjects? Because you know, the people who are going to be engineers, their field is different from those who are studying political science. And those who are going to study political science, their field is different from the field of doctors. If you want to be an engineer, you're asking yourself, here is my decision. Here is my destination. What direction will take me there? You young people, you have the future before you. And you can say, okay, this is my plan. I'll study this subject. I'll study this, I'll study this subject. To look at Second Kings now. Chapter 11, verse 1. And when Atalah, the mother of Ahaz, Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. See what he did, she did. But Je Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which was slain. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, 
in the bed chamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And he was with her hid in the house of the Lord six years. And Athaliah did reign over the land. They stole this boy away to hide him. That's deliverance. That's freedom. But what is the purpose of that freedom? We need to ask ourselves. All the other sons of the king, they were killed. And they were able to keep this boy. And you always must remember, why are you alive when others are dead? Always remember. And don't waste any moment. Every moment is precious. Learn to conserve the time. And learn to answer the question why. And make use of your life so you can go in the direction of your preservation. The reason for preservation in the seventh year. Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers all over the land. All over hundreds. Rulers over hundreds. With the captains and with the guard. And brought them to him into the house of the Lord. And made a covenant with them. And took an oath of them in the house of the Lord. And showed them the king's son. Now when he showed them the king's son, look at verse 12. And he brought forth the king's son. And he put the crown upon him and gave him the testimony. And they made him king and anointed him. And they clapped their hands and said, God save the king. Now the question is, all those six years that they kept the boy. And the nurse was with the, was with the boy. What were they telling the boy? You are free. Because you are rain. Prepare yourself. All those six years, he was in hiding. He was planning for the future. He was training for the future. He was developing himself for the future. Develop yourself. Prepare yourself so that you will not be to, you will not be in six years' time what you are today. And if that is going to take place, what do we need? focus and concentration i come to point number three the power of focus and concentration the power of focus and concentration what does concentration mean it means to choose a job a profession a goal a destiny and you stay at it you stay at it. You see there are people, they start and they meet any difficulty. Then they quit. Don't quit. Focus has power. Concentration has power. The power of focus and concentration. And you know, maybe you've heard this before. They say, anything worth doing again Okay, I'm going to change it for you now. Anything worth doing is worth doing poorly at first. Anything worth doing is worth doing poorly at first. Yes, so do it well later. It's by repeated practice you are going to do it well. It's by concentration and focus you are going to do it well. Did you learn how to ride a bicycle? The first time you started learning how to ride bicycle. For you to look ahead and to hold the handle and then to hold the brakes and then to pedal and then to keep straight. You know, you'll be wobbling. But you kept at it, you kept at it, you kept at it. That's how you are doing it well now. Have you learned how to drive a vehicle? The first time you try to learn how to drive a vehicle, you know, you are holding the steering, you put on the ignition, you are looking ahead, you are watching the mirror, and then you put your leg on the accelerator. It's clumsy, it's difficult. And then, but you did it again, and did it again, and did it again, and did it again. And it's by repeated doing, repeated doing it now you can you know you can be listening to a cassette and driving you can be talking to somebody and driving and you can you know look at a, at a particular place and you know whether it will take you or not because you've done it over and over and over it's focus and concentration 
But when you start, it will look difficult. Plan your future and don't quit. Don't quit. Now that you are free, the way to succeed is just to keep on doing that thing without getting discouraged. Joshua chapter 1. In Joshua chapter 1, we're looking at verse 7. The power of focus and concentration. Joshua chapter 1 verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all that all the Lord which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from each to the right hand or to the left. That's the focus. Turn not to the left. Turn not to the right. Just keep on straight on looking on looking. Doing that same thing. Don't be diverted. Don't be diverted. That is the focus and the concentration. Joshua chapter 23. Joshua chapter 23, reading from verse 6. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefore to the right or to the left. When you get started, keep on moving. You fail, get up and do it again. You don't succeed, get up and do it again. And you, you are going to find eventually you will succeed. I said you will succeed. And think about it. God is on your side. Christ is living in you. And the wisdom of the Holy Ghost will not be denied for you. And the vision to get it done you are going to have. And the courage to keep on moving you are going to have. Unbelieving unbelievers, they try and try and try again. And if unbelievers can stay at it, they don't have Christ. They don't have the promises of God. They don't have the Holy Ghost. They don't have sanctification. They don't have holiness. They don't have freedom. Even with all the hassles and all the struggles in their lives, some of them still keep their head above the water. And we, with all our advantages, the freedom, the forgiveness, the salvation, the sanctification, the holiness, the brain, the mind, the Holy Ghost, the power, the name of Jesus, the possibility of prayer, everything that we have got, if those who don't have Jesus, if they're able to make it in life, you will make it. Second Kings chapter 22. 2 Kings chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 2. In 2 Kings chapter 22 verse 2. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And he walked in all the way of David his father. And turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. Other people before, just focus, just focus. Focus and concentration. Proverbs chapter 4. In Proverbs chapter 4, reading from verse 25. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. Let thine eyes look right on. Let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the paths of thy feet. Let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, not to the left. Turn not to the right hand, not to the left. And what the Bible is telling us is, you know, sometimes you try, you start doing something. And then you say, this is tough. I think I will quit and go and do another thing. You are turning to the right or to the left. But it says, don't do that. Stay at it. Keep on doing it. And you, you will see that eventually you will make... Uh, there's nothing in life. There's nothing in life that you cannot, that you cannot succeed in. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, some people, uh, they don't understand. They say, I didn't go to school. And because I didn't go to school, uh, there's nothing I can, there's a lot you can do. A lot you can do. No, you're free. And you're free from shame. And you can do anything and everything. Let's say, for example, uh, you look at, uh, you know, some offices. You go to those offices. And you see their premises are dirty. And then you say, ah, nobody's thinking about cleaning the offices. And then you apply the, you appeal to the director there, you say, you know, it looks like you're not telling them you people are dirty, you don't have understanding of, you know, hygiene and cleanliness. You say, you know, I can make your environment more beautiful that the people who are coming here, and they would like to come, they would like to come and do something here. Oh, and they say, that's all right. What are you going to pay for that? And then they give you, it may be a, a little amount of money. You go there, you clean, then you go to the next office, you say, you know, um, a 
cleaner, professional cleaner, what you call yourself is what people take you to be. I'm a professional cleaner and I'm already working in that office and enjoying my services. Can I help you? Well, be looking for somebody like that and then you clean their offices and then you clean. Then you have a card, the director of a cleaning company. And then you meet anybody and uh, oh, who are you? Oh, I'm, you know, Mr. So-and-so, I'm the director of, uh, you know, this uh, Emmanuel cleaning company. And then, you know, you give, uh, you give the car to him. Oh, and he says, I've been looking for a job. I can employ you. Then you become an employer. And then you say, you clean offices one to five. And then you are cleaning the others. And you keep on giving, giving out the director's card. By the end of one year, you'll stop cleaning. And then you'll have people just cleaning for you. And you're getting the money. And then part of that money, you are paying salary to other people. Now we're free. And we can do something. Yeah. I said we can do something. Yeah. And then eventually you are going to have an office and you are going to have telephone and you put that on your card. You know, you keep on changing your card. When there was no office, there was no address there. Now there's office, there's address. No telephone. Then the telephone has come. Then you change the card again. And then you have all this. You now have a branch office in Port Harcourt. And then, <laughs> you know, now you have two offices as director of Emmanuel Cleaning Company. Praise the Lord. But you know, you don't get discouraged. You just plan your future. And you just know that by the grace of God, this will be done and this will be done. You set your face like a fleet. In Isaiah chapter 50 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 7. It says, for the Lord God will help me. Can I have an amen? amen. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore... Have I set my face like a fleet, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. I want to declare to you today, my brothers and sisters, and our children, you will not be ashamed. There is a new day. Now we are free. And the question is, why? After the question, why? The next question is, how? Why? Why am I free? I am free so that... I can get to that destination. And once I decide, in five years' time, that's where I will be. You'll be a pastor. 